Fanny was only 14 when she was taken to a church by her aunt. The medium came to her. I have a message from your mother in spirit. You're mistaken, said Fanny. I've just left my mother at home. The medium insisted. You will work in this church and you will have a son who will be a great medium. Together you will work for 100 years and the church will prosper. Fanny ran home and found that her mother had just died from a heart attack. This prophecy has been fulfilled. Fanny became a famous medium, as did her son, Gordon Higginson, who is now the longest serving president of the Spiritualist National Union. The message of spiritualism is not about death, but about life. Your body dies, ladies and gentlemen, but do you? How can these great revelations, how can we understand them unless we search to find where are those you love? Is this world of spirit only for the saints? Oh no. Who are these who come back with this great wakening light? Are they not the ones who have been our parents and our loved ones? And who have suffered in the past? Are they not the ones that come back still with love and back? We've got to get rid of that word, haven't we? How can they come back if they've never been anywhere? There's no such thing as death. Let's get rid of it altogether. Talk about life. And when we talk about our God, why are we so happy? You see, we are never sad as spiritualists. We're happy as why I like funerals. <laughs> have you noticed when they talk about spiritualism, they talk about cards and crystals, and all that sort of thing. It, you know, it annoys me. If I ever get unhappy about things, it's when I see that, and especially when I go past in Blackpool and places like that, and I see up there spiritual clairvoyants. I very often go in, and I say, you know, uh, to them, have you ever seen the spirit world? Oh, no, I'd die if I did. And I say, well, there's no death, you see. This is the problem. And I sort of live here. <laughs> and in addition to that, besides that, what you've got to understand is you give me evidence of the continuity of life, then you could write up that you're a spiritualist clairvoyant. But get rid of the word clairvoyant and call yourself a spiritualist medium. And I had a gentleman named William that's trying to get to a wife. Who is William? My husband. Your husband. That's passed over, I mean. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, he must have been passed a little while. Oh, you? yes. Mm -hmm. But you miss him, don't you? I do. Yes. Much. Because he was always there. Yes. And uh, you look at things and feel, I'd rather have him here than what I've got. It's true. And you'd, you'd, you'd really give so much up. You, it isn't the things that, that matter. It's the love and companionship that was there. Yes. Have you got that? Uh -huh. Well, he's got a lovely place waiting for you, and I, oh, I have to nice. say something to you here, and I hope you'll take it as great I'm going to give it to you. Uh, Twelve months ago, just over, weren't you very well? No, that's fine. Um, yes. Well, well, you know he was rubbing his hands, hoping you were going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I wouldn't mind. Pop? I wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind? No. Well, he was hoping so, because, you know, he's rubbing his hands, and he said, she's not at all well, and she really wishes sometimes that she was with me, you see, and with the family. Yes, that's, that's true, right, isn't that's it? true. Because they've nearly all gone now, haven't they? Yes. There are only three of you left, he said. Yes, that's true. That's right. He's just said so. <laughs> now, that he's talking about Mr. Kitchen. Yes. And then he said he'd left Mrs. Kitchen behind. Yes. And you used to know her. Quite and well. she used to be around you, is that right? That's true. She was rather nice, wasn't she? Very nice. Yes, uh, because she used to speak about Mr. Stead. Yes. Well, he's, they've met Mr. Stead on the other side, and now they've spoken about Mrs. Stead. Do you understand yeah, that? I understand, yes. Yeah. Yes, you've been talking about Mrs. Stead, haven't you? Yes, I've been talking to her daughter the That's other right. day. 
Yes. That's why they've come to see you now. Is that interesting? Mm. You see, yeah. that's very good. You know, you know St. Michael's, anyway, madam, do you know the name? It of is the estimated that we have about three million people who come through our doors that do believe in spiritualism in Great Britain. We are now accepted as a religion. We have well over 400 churches. Um, the first church was in Keithley in Yorkshire. And um, um, from then onwards, of course, every town began to look for property and have services until we have um, spread all over Great Britain. We do ordain ministers as well. And uh, we are now a worldwide movement. It's here in Great Britain where spiritualism really is at its best because we have the and finest mediums. 33, I think. 33, 36. I want the, the numeral three there. Um, and she's saying it was sad, sad in December. Can you understand why she's saying that? A sadness in December. She brings in a sadness. She's bringing in a passing of a gentleman connected with your family in December. But she's also coming down to my feet and she's talking about her slippers. She must have just always, near the end, wore her slippers. But I feel that you have a pair of slippers of her still. Can you understand that? And she wants to say thank you for the encouragement that you gave her. You gave her encouragement and you gave her love, which was something that she didn't really realize the full extent of until she went to the world of spirit. Can you understand that? Yes. She's saying this with a lot of emotion. She's also giving me the impression in my hand at the moment of a red rose that was with her. Can you understand that? Yes. Someone placed it on her body, in her coffin, and she brings that too with a lot of love. And she's saying, I still have it. It will never wither and die. Like my love is always with you. We'll encourage you to go on through your life. And in the moments when you're feeling sad, because she's talking about you still having silent tears when you go into a certain room, and she's saying, just think of her. She hasn't gone. She may be without the physical body, but she's still very much there. And they'll leave you there and say, Thank God you. bless. When you're giving a message from the world of spirit to someone who gets very emotional, I feel that that is part of my responsibility to give to the person the message that their loved ones are all right now and they are still alive even although they don't have this physical body and it just brings them closer for that moment the potential for all forms of mediumship including healing is inherent in everyone not always to the same degree some are born with a, a natural ability. Um, some hear the spirit voices, see the spirit world as children. This can often fail as they grow, because if they're not born into a family that understands it, then it's lost. But a lot of children have invisible playmates and friends, so it is natural. Some retain it and it grows. Others, um, perhaps later in life, discover a, a need for, to find out what this is that they have and within the spiritualist movement train to develop it and understand it and use it uh, to better purpose i have a, a doctor that um, i go to and uh, uh, a while ago um, he asked me if i would go and see a patient uh, that was asking for me that from the medical point of view they couldn't do anything and uh, this person asked if there was any possibility of getting Gordon Higginson to go and um, see them. And the doctor rang me personally and asked me if I would go. And uh, we discussed it afterwards. And he said that he felt that we could do sometimes what they couldn't do. But basically, you see, we're not just a movement of healers. We are a movement that proves and believes in the continuity of life after death. I believe that uh, every home should have its own home circle. 
Uh, the vital point of circle is to get to know yourself, to get to know the people that are working with you, to get to know the way that they want to work with you. And then the proof of the pudding really is when you start to go out and work outside your circle. changes anything you become aware of there is a man <coughs> standing here and I feel he was a butcher on the earth plane because he was wearing the old blue and white striped apron and the uh, you know the straw hat and this goes back quite a long time quite a heavy dark moustache I don't know whether he rings a bell with anybody but he would go back quite a long way he was just standing very quietly and, and all he was really saying, if it meant anything to anybody, was that don't change your mind. It's as though somebody's decided to do something and they're a little bit apprehensive. And he says, don't change your mind. Go along with what you're thinking about. It's right for you. And he was dark-haired. I feel he was about 50, give or take a little, when he passed into the spirit world. And also, there was something wrong with one of his yeah. fingers, which I think he may have cut or lost a bit or something. Um, my grandfather was a butcher and he passed a spirit at the age of 59. Oh. He oh, was, okay, he was tall, dark-haired. Oh, he was tall, man. Could you understand what Bob said about changing your mind? Yes. Yes, it's relevant. <laughs> Come to once you are sure of yourselves and once you have uh, expanded yourself into a good spirit communication then uh, you invite people in and they act as your guinea pig and instead of working with each other you work with your guinea pig mm. you invite somebody <laughs> in and uh, their reward is that everybody's trying to give them a message <laughs> so, and your reward is that you're able to work with a stranger I get the name Ella she's dressed in Victorian type clothes but she's not from Victorian era right. I get a sense that she's from some time later almost Edwardian maybe 1920s mm. um, but very conservative very Victorian style of dress quite a severe lady a sort of a very strict uh, sort of dark dress very tightly buttoned um, but she didn't. She wasn't from the Victorian era as um, such. Yeah, no, that doesn't. Yeah. No. That doesn't, sort of, yeah. doesn't ring any bells at all. Ella. 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 I don't know an Ella. No. It's a funny thing. I don't know an Ella. No. Ella. Things, um, if, if you Ella. A bit more. <clears throat> the sense of coldness. And um, after 1951, the government of this country recognised that there were genuine mediums. The Fraudulent Mediums Act was passed to um, act against anyone pertaining to be a genuine medium and giving false information. And it is important when you're working on platform to remember that if you give information for the future and you are taking money of any sort uh, for doing that work and that information does not prove to be accurate, then you can be sued and the church can be sued as well. This is why in the Spiritualist National Union we do not encourage you to work in future events. Mm -hmm. We are there to prove survival. We are there to prove that people here on the earth plane will go on no matter what they are, who they are, or why they are. We are spiritualists and we are not psychics only. We do not like being confused with the occult. The occult is a hidden science. Spiritualism is open. Anything that we do, we do it openly. Anything that we have, we give it freely. Any knowledge that we have, we share it with anyone that wants it. We prove life after death. That is spiritualism. It has got nothing to do with the occult practices. It has nothing to do with fortune telling. At one time, people 
we're afraid of the darkened rooms. We're now coming to the understanding that the darkened rooms were all right in the past, but now we've got to develop it into the light. All our services, for example, are all in light. Uh, the seances were always in the dark, but gradually we are introducing light because we feel that um, it always gave that sort of mystic feeling to people. They got rather worried, wondering what was going on in the dark and that sort of thing. I feel an Indian guide with you, and oh. he will help you with your healing. Oh, I see. So well, that's good. Is this Indian living yes. suddenly? Yes. People that come to us from all over the world. So we are moving very much to the front. And I think that we've done a very good job when you come to think that in 150 years, we're now in every part of the world. The person that she's talking to um, in their work uses the throat area as if I want um, a clear audience situation or a um, direct voice situation here with that person. Uh, Yes, uh, the person is mediumistic. What we're trying to do is to get the novice mediums to use their sensitivity, their own mediumship, to reach out to the communicators that are coming. Um, I'm also hearing two names. I hear the name Emily and the name Rosemary. I'm not sure that these are, are names of hers, but... Um, we're asking them to use their sensitivity, their awareness, and then to give evidence, detailed evidence. She's shuffling along and also i'm not sure if this no this is she's with a, a stick but she's bent over now like i have to say it's like she's given up she's she feels deserted a little um yes but as i look at her hands it's there as though it could be rheumatism or mm. the joints um all right i'm going to break the contact if i can now because what you've got is my grandmother. And um, I knew it wasn't right to have her there. And so what is the thing? We'll be able to witness Judith going into the state of trance. <clears throat> if I may take a moment longer. Yes. When she is in that state and the guy has been talking to us, we will then be able to ask questions. It is my pleasure to communicate with you through my beloved child. Always remember, we can't ever promise anything. It's always an experiment in these uh, stages of development. I understand that you have your machinery here. Well, yes, we have certain machinery here. Oh, yes, I have seen my uh, picture before on your television. Oh, yes. Yes. Perhaps yes. not with so many um, uh, lights as this, but your light is uh, also small compared to the light of the spirit world. Well, we understand that. Uh, what is really taking place? Where are you? And what are you actually doing? You know I have no physical body that is uh, elementary, but I bring my presence to the um, rear of my child within the spiritual radiations of her spiritual body. And I uh, use the mind which controls the um, nervous system of the body in order to communicate with you. Of course, I make no intrusion upon the body of the child. It is controlled through the um, subconscious mind and the nervous system with the cooperation of my beloved one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
you are all very serious here. <laughs> and um, when uh, you have been without your legs for some time, even if they are a bit, um, a bit wobbly, you like to uh, try them out. So uh, I will try out my legs. Uh, uh, just to confuse you very nice gentlemen who have set up this room so very well. I shall, uh, um, as I like to do, be a little bit um, uh, eccentric. Is that permissible? Mm. Yes. 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 I am very glad that you have some ladies here for me today. Because, you know, when we pass to the world of spirit, we still like to see the delightful ladies uh, come to join us. And you are all very beautiful here today. And uh, it is good that um, we have you. Um, you are a delight to my eyes, even if I haven't got any. And you make my heart pound, even though I haven't got one anymore. <laughs> Yes, this is better. I want you to smile and to relax and to know that I am real and a living being with um, a mind uh, that has uh, left this earth and uh, lives in another dimension. Uh, yes. May I speak for a moment or two? Yes. The spirit world has told you that walls and barriers will come down, but these are physical walls and barriers. Only you within your hearts can bring down the true barriers, the barriers of love, the barriers that make you all of the same spirit. You have already asked this question today, how oh, it is that we cannot speak to you so easily, and it is because you create your own barriers and you do not allow yourself to be spirit now as you are. And I ask you, this is what I wish to say in this short time. Break down the barriers of hatred, of jealousy, of the desire for power over your fellow man, and to know that in the sight of God and in the realms and dimensions of spirit, you are all the same. Well, I think you've cooperated very well with us. May I now ask something of you? Yes. May I ask you to put out your lights for one moment? I told you I would be awkward. And more time the camera. I Well. I would like very much to say that I cooperate with the spirit world and they cooperate with us. They don't intrude. Um, this is my um, self and I offer it free. They don't make fools of you. They do the not, thing. no, that's right. And. Um, yeah, you must have been quite satisfied or else you wouldn't have come. Well, I felt all day, you know, I'm sure I wasn't mm. doing this, but uh, there has been that feeling, obviously my own nerves within me, but the feeling that I get when I know that he is happy to do it. And having had communication with him, he said he was prepared to try and that he felt the problem might be more with me than with him, <laughs> <laughs> which it probably was. And when have you actually been um, sort of working in public? Uh, Judith. I work in the platform. Or uh, with Jackson. Oh, well, very reluctant to work publicly in trance for a long time. Mm. Gordon knows about this. Simply because I'm always very keen that we portray the right image. Yes. People that don't understand what's happening.
can get the wrong impression. That's right. Mm. And Good. this is why we are always kept away from the public eye with transmedia. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is quite correct. It's, um, they may not always understand it, whereas spiritualists should be able to understand it. That's right. And I would hate to think that it came across as some sort of uh, performance or a gimmick uh, because it's far too precious to me to uh, be portrayed in that way. Of course. No, okay, no. I didn't, thank you. For many centuries, uh, there were no mediums and no real phenomena. Um, then when spiritualism came, about again, modern spiritualism, um, we began to find that certain things were happening that would not happen before such as raps, knocks, things of that sort, that then led to people coming under the influence of the spirit, which was uh, what we call trance control and things of that sort. And from that uh, then came direct voice, independent voice. The voice that um, happened when John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus, when there came the voices from the heavens. It's the same principle, the same sort of gift what we call the direct voice or the independent voice. And um, then we found that lots of new mediums were born with those particular gifts. So we, had, we were overwhelmed by these particular gifts. And people were having remarkable evidence by having a voice that was not spoken by any person living, but was a voice recognized by people that had passed over. And from that, uh, we then found that um, there was white mists appearing with people, uh, and eventually we discovered that it was ectoplasm. And uh, from this, there was moldings and people, formations of people were beginning to happen. I have a friend of mine that was reminding me of attending a seance with a lady uh, whose daughter had passed away. And at one of our seances, she built and uh, built up, formed, and walked uh, quite a long distance to get to a mother because a lot of people were present. And um, they actually held hands and um, uh, the mother and daughter were united together. We are here to stay, no matter what opposition we have we shall still be here because we know we are right. Our mediums have, have faced all sorts of ridicule and we'll face it again if we have to because we know we've the only movement that can unite the whole world together. I think the spiritualism is really a worldwide knowledge. They're all going to survive death anyway. They all have a living soul. And that is what links us all together as one great family on this world. And the sooner we recognize that, the better. I'll tell you what I get. I seem to hear breaks, as though there's a break going on. And I wondered if you'd ever known anyone that could probably have been killed either by a car or a bus or something where there were breaks. Yes, it was Walter killed in a car accident. It was killed, and this is Walter, is it? This is Walter. He wishes to be...